I'm Mark Syme, minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome all of you to the evening services for Sunday, March the 13th. We'll be singing a few songs. We'll be observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message uh, for you that I hope will be beneficial uh, to all of us. We're singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. If you have that book, uh, that's great. If you don't have it and you want to sing along with us through the magic of Google, uh, I will give you the title of the song and uh, you can perhaps look it up and you can sing along with us. So if you would turn your songbooks first to number 771. 771. The title of this song is Lord Speak to me, Lord, speak to me, 771. <clears throat> Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tongue. As thou hast sought me, so let me seek thine erring children lost and long. Oh, strengthen me that while I stand firm on the rock and strong in thee, I may stretch out a loving hand to wrestlers with the troubled sea. Oh, fill me with thy fullness, Lord, until thy very heart overflow in kindling thoughts and glowing word. Thy love to tell, thy praise to show. The next song will be, Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying, number 726. Seven twenty six. Lord, listen to your children praying. Let's sing it through twice. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, Listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Before the Lord's Supper, let's sing number 705. 705. The title of the song is A Common Love. A Common Love. 705. 
A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. On the first day of the week, we gather together. Uh, we gather in worship. We gather in song. We gather in prayer. We gather in breaking down the Lord's Word. And perhaps the crowning touch of why we gather together is listed for us in Acts, the 20th chapter and the 7th verse, where it says, and on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper uh, as part of the Passover feast uh, the night before his betrayal. He gathered with the twelve, and uh, he uh, symbolically and, and literally let them know what was going to happen. And uh, there were two symbols involved it was the bread, the unleavened bread, which represented his body. And there was the uh, fruit of the vine, which represented his blood. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul, uh, almost word for word, uh, recounts uh, how the Lord's Supper works. And so let's remember now on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. And so as we do this, we remember uh, what Jesus went through, what Jesus did in dying for us as he suffered, as he bled, and as he sacrificed himself that we might be saved. And so as we uh, pause for just a moment, let's remember the body of our Lord as we partake of the bread. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're uh, just so grateful that in your infinite wisdom that uh, all of this was a part of your plan, that you would send Jesus, your son, to earth to live as a human and to also physically die as a human. We're so uh, awed by the fact that he gave himself up, that he gave up his body in our stead. We just hope, dear God, that we can be worthy of that. And as we partake of the bread, let's remember his broken body. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> let's pray for the cup. As we drink of this uh, fruit of the vine, we just pray that uh, we will remember the blood that flowed from Jesus' head, his hands, his feet, and his side. The life-giving blood, the sin-forgiving blood. Help us to remember the power that is in that blood and that Jesus was willing to sacrifice himself that we might one day live with you. Bless this cup. Bless us as we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being complete, we also usually wrapped around the Lord's Supper, although it's not a part. Uh, we remember that uh, we're supposed to give back to the Lord that with which we have been prospered. And I just pray that as we, as we do this, we'll remember that all good things uh, come down to us from you. And when we give, we just give you what is yours anyway. Uh, help us, dear Heavenly Father, as we give, to do so with an open heart, uh, with gratitude, knowing all that has been done for us. Let's pray. We just thank you for the opportunity that we have to give back. 
We just pray that the monies that we give will be utilized by the church to further your work here on earth. We pray that it, we will not only evangelize, but through this giving that uh, we will uh, be able to be benevolent toward those that are in need as uh, you instructed us to help the widows and the orphans. We are to help the poor and we are to give to those who uh, just aren't able at a particular time to care for themselves. Bless us in our giving. Help us to not just be benevolent, help us to be grateful and help us to be liberal in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we'll sing before the lesson is number 543. The title of this song is Wonderful Words of Life. 543. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinnerless to His loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life Offer pardon and peace to all Wonderful words of life Jesus, only Savior Sanctify forever Beautiful words, wonderful words Wonderful words of life Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Thank you for participating in our song service. Uh, we're just uh, so grateful that we, we can praise our Lord and that we can praise our Lord together in song. And again, if you were there this morning at uh, our morning worship service, you uh, heard the title of our lesson this evening, and that title is Take Care What You Listen To. Take Care What You Listen To. This is about hearing and listening this evening. Um, in Jesus' day, the uh, Jewish world that Jesus was born into, being a, a Jew by lineage through the uh, house of Judah, through the house of David, uh, they faced a dilemma because Jesus was bringing uh, a special message to them, a message that had never been brought before. And the message was that of a return to the reign of God. We find that in the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, verses 14 and 15. Um, if we can characterize Jesus as being somewhat unconventional uh, in what he said and the things that he do, so be it. 
sometimes unconventional is taken in a negative way, but Jesus's unconventional was very, very good because he did things that the Jewish community vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Jewish leaders of the day would not do. And so uh, let's let's look at some of the things that Jesus said and did that made him so special. In Mark chapter 2, verses 14 to 17, we found, I found out that he ate with the tax collectors and the sinners. Imagine that. Can you imagine the Pharisees sitting down to a meal with the tax collectors and the sinners? In Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 20, uh, as he talked to the Pharisees, uh, we find out that he did not encourage his followers to fast uh, as a way of a public display of spirituality. Now understand, he didn't say don't fast. All right, because fasting was something that was carried on through Jewish tradition and through uh, the early church. So there was nothing wrong with fasting. There was nothing wrong with depriving oneself of food for a period of time so that perhaps you can get a little closer to the Lord through that. What Jesus didn't want and it's what very often uh, the Pharisees would do and the religious leaders of the do that uh, would do. He, he didn't want them to do it for show. He didn't want them just as they tithed for them to tell everybody that they tithed. He didn't want them, uh, everyone to know Oh, I haven't eaten in two hours or three hours or four hours and put on this long face and this long face of piety. And so in an, to them, an unconventional way, Jesus said fast, but don't do it just as a public display of your spirituality. In Mark chapter two, verses 23 to 28, we find out that Jesus challenged some of the ideas of the day. And the ideas of the day that he challenged were things that the Jewish leadership took on as tradition. For example, when he did good things on the Sabbath, it broke their concept of what the Sabbath was all about. The, the Sabbath was supposed to be the day dedicated to God. On the Sabbath, you weren't supposed to go so far from home. Uh, you had to make sure you were home before uh, nightfall. And because of this, they grew jealous of Jesus and they wanted to destroy him. In Mark chapter 3, verse 22, they came saying, he is possessed by Beelzebub. Beelzebub. He casts out demons by the ruler of demons. And so what they were doing was they were attributing what Jesus said, what he did, and even the healings that he did they attributed those to demons, to a demon part of him, not a godly part of him. Now, this puts the people at large, not the Jewish leaders, but the majority of the Jews on the horns of dilemma. Now they have to make a decision. Who are we going to listen to? Are we going to listen to these Pharisees and these Sadducees? Are we going to listen to the leaders? 
Are we going to listen to Jesus? This man that we see that heals the sick, brings the dead back to life, calms the sea. And so with that in mind, in response, Jesus challenges not only his disciples, but the people that he speaks to and the people that he teaches. And he says something very important to them. Hence the title of my lesson in Mark chapter 4, verse 24. And it says, take care what you listen to. Now, you know what? Jesus <laughs> you know, was the son of God. He knew people's hearts. And with that, he understood the influence that the Jewish leaders had over the people. And he understood how difficult it would be for the people at large to block out the different voices that were waging war for their thinking and ultimately for their lives. I did a series of devotionals last week called Voices That Call. And in this case, we're talking about just a little something different. The people were getting the call to salvation from Jesus. And they were getting the call on the, I guess, the, the physical ways that they ought to act from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. With that, Jesus echoed a phrase. It's found in several places in the gospel. It's found in Mark 4, 9 and 23. It's found in Mark 7, 16 and Mark 8, 18. And if you're rattling this around and you listen to the title, take care what you listen to, you might have an idea of what these words were. He said, he who has ears, let him hear. He who has hear, ears to hear, let him hear. And interestingly enough, this phrase just moves down through the corridors of time. It moves from the first century to 2022. The teaching is just as relevant today as it was in Jesus's time. Who do we listen to? We live in a culture, uh, if you're old enough to remember what a megaphone was, we live, or, we live in, a, in a megaphone culture. It's not a physical megaphone. We live in an echo chamber, if you've heard that before. The echo chamber is what we see and hear in the media. It's what we read in the newspapers. If you still read a newspaper or read a news magazine, it's certainly, it's certainly in today's day, it certainly floods the social media and the internet, and sorrowful to say, it may even make inroads in the church. That teaching about a person who has ears to hear, let him hear. Don't you know that all of the news stations are vying for your attention? Now, you know who they are. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, mention all of the news stations out there. There was a time when the news came on at 6 and 10 <laughs> here on the East Coast. And we got news at 6, news at 11. Now we have a 24-hour news cycle. It used to be in the days of our forefathers, the Jeffersons and the Washingtons and the Monroes and the Madisons, when they wanted to convey to somebody, they wrote it out and they sent letters. Today, we turn on the computer and, dit, 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 and we email it 
or we turn on our device and we text it. And there are forums out there all over the place that are vying for your attention and my attention. And so each voice out there seeks to convince us that they're the voice that we ought to listen to. Jesus is teaching us bright, clear, the clarion call. Take care what you listen to. Now, some bring a message that's in conflict with the Bible, that's in conflict with our King of Kings. They seek to relabel evil as good and good for evil. And make no mistake, they're waging a war for your heart and my heart, for your thinking and my thinking. And so the call goes out again. Take care what you listen to. Now, certainly we're living in a world today that the world has shrunk so uh, drastically that we know things that are going on on the other side of the world just when they're happening. I know that when, uh, I think it was when we won the Battle of Vicksburg in the Civil War, it took two days or more for the news to get from Vicksburg to Washington, D.C. Now this stuff is is instant in the media. And so, uh, the, the news outlets, the, the computer, our social media want to bring up these worldly issues and make them the most important things in our life. And understand, Russia invading Ukraine is an important thing that's going on. The multi, uh, the, the mega powers of the world that, um, we vie for uh, economically and politically are important. Let's not let's not brush that under the table. But you know what? Satan knows that if he can keep us focused on the worries of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, uh, the desire for other things, that he can su succeed in making the seed of God's word unfruitful in our lives. Take care what you listen to. In the social media, when people pass things on, how often are what they pass on things that are their own? But rather, they read something, they make it theirs, and they send it to you and I. This is the belief now. It's not even theirs, but they may agree with certain aspects of it, so they make it theirs. They vie for control of our thoughts. Some simply speak from opinion. And they try to convince us that theirs are the voices that we need to listen to. But understand, the wisdom of God is not the wisdom of man. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25, the writer puts it so succinctly that we can all understand it. He says, there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of death, even though it seems right to man. What the writer of Proverbs is saying is, take care what you listen to. Now, sometimes we even go uh, to the remotest of places, we get so wrapped up in ourselves that we focus more on our interests than the interests of God. Just after uh, Jesus fed the 5,000 in Mark chapter 8, we know that Peter kind of came and, and butted heads with Jesus, and Peter found himself doing exactly that when his preconceptions of what things ought 
to be got in the way of what the truth actually was. <laughs> Jesus did not pull any punches. He said, get behind me, Satan. Okay, get behind me. You're getting your mind on man's interest. You're setting your mind on man's interests, not God's interests. We as a Christian body must have our interests on God's interests. We ought to do in our lives what God wants us to do with our lives. We reject whatever, what others tell us when the narrative is wrong. When we take others opinions and so forth, and we try to make them ours. Uh, we, what we do is sometimes we reject God and our desires can become the filter and too often they become the loudest voice. How often do you get something that says, pass this along to somebody else? Why? Because they think it's true and they think that you should think it's true and if you think it's true, you should send it off to someone else. Take care what you listen to. The result of these voices uh, in our heads is clear. Many of them say, man, what am I supposed to believe? What, what do I know is true anymore? And in John chapter 17, verse 17, the scripture tells us that we have a source for truth. God's word can guide us, but we have to spend time listening to us, to it. Be careful what you listen to. So the question comes back to us. Do we have ears to hear? If so, what are we listening to? The reality of this question is almost mind-boggling. And the reality of the question can often be answered by simply evaluating how much time we give our ears to things that we probably shouldn't give our ears to. How much time do we spend in the study of God's word? Do we spend as much time in it as we do in politics? How much time do we spend listening to God in the voices of pages of scripture as we do watching our favorite news source? or watching our favorite sports program, or our favorite sitcom? Do we spend as much time searching for answers from God as we do searching the internet for confirmation of our particular point of view on something? Do we see the things that compete with us? for getting closer to God because there are things out there that will pull our mind away from God? Do we spend as much time telling others about God and salvation as we do uh, uh, telling others about the latest mandate, the latest theory, the latest candidate for political office to uh, either agree or disagree with that person? My challenge goes out to you this evening. And I think, I think it's a really important one. Let us be people that have ears to hear God's voice above all others. Let us be people who take care what they listen to. We need to turn down the volume on things sometime 
and tune in to the word of God and listen to God's voice talking to us. I, I compare it sometimes to watching a sporting event and seeing people spend, uh, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars on a seat to a sporting contest. And there they are with device in hand. The game that they're spending all this money on in front of them, being played out in front of them. And they're watching their device, maybe texting someone, maybe getting on the social media, what, whatever it might be. And I, I question myself and I'm saying, why did you spend all this money if you were going to look at your device? You can do that at home for free. And I make that comparison. We need to get off of the recliner or whatever it might be. We need to get out of uh, our our media devices and get back into the Lord's word so that we might know and we might take care what we listen to and make that what is important to us. Because when we listen to the truth of God's word, we find his plan of salvation for us. We find his offering of grace. We find his offering of salvation. We ha find his offering to us about how to get into him through Jesus Christ, through believing through the scriptures, through uh, confessing Jesus as the son of God, through repenting of our former way, and being baptized for the remission of our sins. When we do that, we are listening to what we ought to listen to. And then when we come to the Lord through baptism, then we have to make sure each day of our life that we take care what we listen to. If you haven't come to the Lord yet, I have laid out the plan for you. The invitation is extended to you this evening. If you need to accept it, be in touch with one of us and we will be there to help you along your path. I hope this message was uh, insightful to you and that uh, you have something uh, to take with you this evening. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that you care for us and that you love us. We're just so grateful that uh, you sent Jesus to earth at just the right time. We're so grateful for the things that he taught. And I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we will take such great care and let us be the people who actually take care what we listen to and that what we listen to is the truth of your word. Bless us this evening. Be with us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to to stay as close to you as possible. And although sometimes we think that places are so far away and we know that there's a war raging uh, over there in Europe, but we just, we just pray for those people, dear Heavenly Father, that are being impacted and affected by that. Help us to pray. Help us, if we can, give uh, of our means to help some of those people to do so. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to be the godly people that you want us to be by having the ears to hear and hearing your word. Be with us, bless us, and comfort us. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all.
Blessed be.